Hello, I'm William Devine. I'm the Senior Technical Support Representative for the Whitmix Corporation. Today I'd like to discuss the use and safety guidelines of the handout alcohol torch. The first we thing we need to do with the alcohol torch is address any safety concerns, look for any visual cracks or any damage to the unit. Once we've inspected it, make sure that the unit is kept in the upright position for safety reasons. Spillage of alcohol can cause uh, burns and uh, damage to the lab. The first thing we're going to check is the wick. Check to see if the wick has uh, got charred areas and is hard. This could prevent lighting. If we do see that, simply unscrew the wick holder, turn the wick to reveal wick that needs to be cut off, get a pair of regular utility scissors and cut the tip of the wick. to reveal fresh wick. If it's necessary to replace the wick, remove the old wick, unscrew the wick out of the wick holder, take the new wick, feed it into the bottom of the wick holder, turn until the fresh wick emerges through the top. We want to leave enough to allow for space between the, the nozzle and the wick holder. Before we insert the new wick, we'll need to fill the alcohol torch with an acceptable fuel. Uh, the preferred fuel would be denatured alcohol. For a complete list of acceptable fuels, please visit wetmix.com. To fill our alcohol torch, we'll need a funnel with a nozzle small enough to go into the where the wick holder was. Simply insert the funnel, use a small container of denatured alcohol, and fill carefully, in small amounts, making sure not to overfill the alcohol torch. Periodically, you may want to look down into the hole to see the progress and see how full the alcohol torch is. In the event we do spill alcohol, it's very important that we wipe off any of the spillage. Now we're ready to insert the wick in the wick holder. Before we light the torch, it's important to allow, through capillary action, alcohol to be absorbed into the wick. Uh, we want to make sure it's completely saturated before lighting. Also, we want to expect the filler cap. Make sure that that is not clogged with any wax because there needs to be um, airflow. Uh, we want to check the tip, the nozzle. Make sure it's not clogged with any wax uh, for safe operation. Uh, if the filler cap is clogged with wax, it can either be boiled out in a boil out tank or it can actually be steamed. Now that we've done our inspection of the torch, we're ready to light it. Uh, we want to make sure that um, we close the needle valve completely off, the thumb screw, um, because we're going to show uh, how to get a needle point flame. And we turn this completely to the clockwise position for that. Light the torch, and then simply press the trigger to get a needle-like flame. Control the flame by the frequency of the pumping action. If, however, you want a brush type flame, just simply turn the thumb screw completely counterclockwise and open it up. And then begin your pumping action. That'll create more of a brush type broad flame. And again, the intensity of the flame is controlled by the pumping action. If, however, you want to use the torch as an alcohol lamp, simply turn the nozzle assembly to the left or to the right. And then you can warm and soften wax or whatever material is needed. To extinguish the flame, simply blow it out. 
use the wick cover to ensure complete extinguishing of the flame. When we're ready to store the unit, it's important to remove the wick cover and feel the wick to make sure that it's not warm to the touch. If it's not, simply put the wick cover back on and store it in an upright, uh, safe fire cabinet. If it's found that any of the gaskets are worn or missing, it's important not to use the unit. Failure to use the unit properly or misuse of the unit can cause fire, property damage, or personal injury. In the event your unit is damaged, it's important to refer to the parts list. Some parts can be replaced by the user. Some parts would require factory repair. The parts that require factory repair will be denoted with an asterisk next to them. At that point, please contact Whitmix to arrange a return for repair. The parts list can be found either with your unit or can be found online on our website.